And welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. Uh, I'm Andrew Kraft. Thanks for being with us here. We have a live picture there uh, in southern Israel looking into the Gaza Strip. We got the news today. A uh, major, major decision from Israel's Supreme Court ruling unanimously that the military must begin drafting ultra-Orthodox men for compulsory service. The Associated Press calls it a landmark decision that could lead to the collapse of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's governing coalition as the war in Gaza there rages on. Fox News foreign affairs correspondent Trey Yinks has more. Let's watch. Billows from southern Lebanon after an Israeli strike. Hours later, Hezbollah drones are launched into northern Israel. It's another day of cross-border fire and another day closer to a larger war. If there will not be an arrangement through diplomatic means, everyone understands that there must be an arrangement through other means. Israeli officials are becoming increasingly impatient with Hezbollah's continued rocket, mortar and drone attacks into their country. A staggering 5,000 such strikes have killed nearly two dozen Israelis, according to the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Israel's Defense Minister Yoav Gallant met this morning with his counterpart, Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, to discuss a path forward for countering the Iran-backed group with American support. The United States will always support Israel's right to defend itself. And the United States will always ensure that Israel has what it needs to defend itself. Austin's words don't directly align with the policy of the Biden administration, which has abandoned emergency procedures meant to accelerate weapon shipments to Israel. When similar actions were taken for weapons deliveries to Ukraine, it left the country low on ammunition and fighting at a disadvantage. Israeli leadership worries they could suffer a similar fate against Iran and its largest proxy. The greatest threat to, to the future of the world and the future of our region is Iran, and time is running out. While Israel braces for the possibility of a broader war with Hezbollah, the Israeli Supreme Court today ruled that ultra-Orthodox citizens will be required to serve in the military. In Tel Aviv, Trey Yingst, Fox News. Trey, thanks so much. Uh, in the meantime here, we want to talk about that decision by Israel's Supreme Court with none other than Clifford May, founder of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He joins me. Um, Cliff, thanks for being with us here. I know you've been uh, kind of waiting offline watching all of these stories unfold today. This is a big one, and I think it's worth having a segment like this. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, in the entirety of Israel's existence, this has never been the case for, for ultra-Orthodox Jews in the country uh, to do their compulsory two-year military service. After this ruling today, now it is. Is that the case? Do I have that right? You have that right, and just to put a little bit of meat on the bone there, um, Israel had its war of independence in, starting in 1948. The British would have been the imperial power following the Ottoman Empire, which had been the imperial power in that part of the world. The British pulled out the Jewish community in Israel, uh, declared its independence. You'll recall, of course, that the UN had a two-state a, a two proposal, a, a Jewish state and an Arab state, and that's the way they termed it at that point. Uh, and the Arabs said, no, we're not going to agree to that. We don't want there to be any Jewish state. Israel was attacked the next day by five Arab neighbors. Uh, it was a very grueling war, um, a little bit like the war that's that now. A lot of people thought Israel couldn't survive. Israel did survive, and in 1949, Israel instituted a draft because Israel knew it would be under attack for, for, for years, to, many years to come. Now, when they did this, two things were done. They went to the Arab citizens of Israel, now constitute about 20% of the population, and essentially said, you don't need to serve in the army. You can volunteer, glad to have you, but you don't need to. We're not going to draft you. Also, Ben-Gurion, who was at that point the prime minister, he he was approached by the Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox community. It was very small at that point. Most um, of the ultra-religious Jews had been in Europe and had been wiped out. And he said, we, can, we, can those who are studying Torah, those who are real scholars of Judaism, can they not serve as well? And over all this time, as you correctly point out, those who said they were full-time involved in Torah study were able to not serve in the military and didn't serve in the military and haven't been serving in the military. Two things have happened. One is the ultra-Orthodox community has had a lot of kids. They're a much larger right. portion of the population. Not all of them can be considered great scholars, but a lot of them do spend most of their time studying 
Torah studying religion. The other thing that happened, of course, is October 7th and the war that has gone on since then. The Israelis now recognize that they need a much larger army than they thought. They had hoped technology would allow for a very small army. That's no longer the case. And so the Supreme Court is saying we have to start with the, even the very religious. They have to be subject to the draft as well. That's sort of the history in a nutshell. Okay, no, that was that was a great, a great elucidation of that. But but to say this is controversial is putting it mildly, so to speak. I mean, is it not? In Israel, uh, I, I just want to offer some more from the Associated Press. They say the court struck down a law that codified these exemptions in 2017. 2017, of course, was not a wartime Israel. And so did the court have that in mind? What Was the push, was the effort to expand the compulsory draft for this or, or not? Was it completely separate? This has been a controversy for some time within Israel, should the ultra-religious have a, a permanent a, a exemption. Uh, we've had in the U.S. student exemptions, there are all kinds of exemptions, maybe a great athlete in Israel or America, they say, okay, if you're going to the Olympics, we'll find you an exemption from the draft. The U.S. doesn't currently have a draft. This was done in, in, in Israel, it's always complicated. There are laws and there are regulations. The defense minister can say we don't need to draft people from the ultra-Orthodox community. But now what the Supreme Court has ruled, I think AP is right, that the mil they've said the military can't continue with these exemptions. They must begin to draft ultra-Orthodox men. That's right. And yes, that's going to be, that will be controversial. That is controversial. And because, you know, Israel is not as, unlike, we have a we have a two party system essentially. Sure. They have a multi party system. Every government has to be a coalition. There will be so forming a coalition. There will be parties of uh, there are ultra religious parties. There are very far right parties um, who may uh, or may not agree on this. Yes, anytime you have a decision like this, and anytime you have a big controversy like this in sure. in Israel, this is not the only one. You can end end up with a with, with the government falling. It's been oh. very narrow government majorities for a long time under Benjamin Netanyahu. You know, that was my next question too. I mean, do, do you agree with the premise from the Associated Press, uh, the, the contention that this is extremely threatening uh, to Bibi Netanyahu's very fragile governing coalition right now, so much so that this alone could sink it? Uh, it absolutely could. If, okay. uh, I, I, if you can see that, you can certainly see that happening. Um, I think there would have been another election if there were not. A, it's hard to have an election during a war. That's not an easy thing to do. It's not clear. We know who who who, who is who the competitors of Bibi Netanyahu are. It is not clear which of them could form a majority government through coalitions. But yes, this kind of controversy uh, certainly could easily break a, fra a government that, as you say, was already fragile. All right, uh, Clipper, man, we're going to have to leave it at that. Thanks so much uh, for hanging around, for making uh, this story make sense for us, and we'll talk soon. My pleasure. Thank you.